this is Biden. Dear Billy Night Nightshades, I'm not offended by your take on Biden because I don't really get offended and I'm not outraged by Biden. Biden. Okay, so now you know immediately this person's going to fucking be offended. My opinion, however, is different than yours, which despite what they tell us on the new, the news is okay. All right. I would take another look at the video of him groping side boob and shit. If that was a guy I work with, I'd have the same opinion. And it happens when the guy is next to a podium, not on the dance floor, sending signals. Some of the girls are young. It's just weird. And I'm not even saying he's got bad intentions. You just can't touch strangers that long. Ha ha. And I totally understand the it was from a different time thing. But my dad never rubbed up on people and he served in Korea and drove a cutlass. Love you and love the podcast. Oh, here's the thing about the Joe Biden thing. I didn't even see that. I, I saw like half a clip before I went out on Conan. They go, you want to talk about that? I'm like, yeah, I'll fucking talk about it. <laughs> I don't pay attention to shit. I'm just so fucking sick of everybody having their fucking career ended on, on, on a fucking, you know, a two minute tripping penalty. And everybody else sitting there fucking acting like they're good people. As I've said from day one, if everybody's fucking text messages were made public, could anybody go to work next Monday? Nobody. Nobody could. So everybody's got to stop fucking, like this fucking witch hunt that like, you know, for your own fucking, this is the thing too. The amount of people that are going to watch Biden's dream of becoming president get destroyed just for the entertainment purpose of it. That's all they want to do. And there's another thing, too, is because there's so many different ways to just sit down and watch shit. There's so much shit to fucking watch. There's so much way, so many ways to watch shit that one of ratings grabbing is fucking stirring up controversy. Jesus Christ, do you remember the fucking family feud? Richard Dawson was like tongue kissing every fucking chick on the goddamn fucking thing. There was no fucking problem. He hosted a few. Right? It was fine. Everybody fucking sitting there getting uncomfortable. It didn't happen to you. Nothing happened to you. This isn't your fucking story. If the woman's uncomfortable, she should say something. Jesus fucking Christ. The amount of that shit where it's just like so-and-so said this, but did they really mean that? Should Peyton Manning be upset? Well, he's obviously not upset, ESPN. I remember that one from back in the day. I don't know. I'm, I'm one of these fucking people that it's just like, if, if that's between the fucking people involved. I don't know what their fucking relationship is, and neither do you. For all you know, he was maybe the side boob chick. He's fucking banging. And afterwards, she's just like, dude, what the fuck? Don't grab my tit on fucking TV. They're going to know we're fucking banging. There's a possible scenario. Look at me with no evidence. I can do it too. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, not in, I'm not in the fucking business of fucking making up shit and trying to fucking get people in trouble. Am I? Maybe I am as a comedian. I don't know. I just feel like I'm fucking joking around. And like this, this fucking thing where you just shove a microscope up everybody's ass. They're all human. They're all fucking flawed. I remember back in the day when I worked in a warehouse, there was this fucking manager guy. He was too fucking touchy-feely. And you know what? We all fucking dealt with it. It was fucking hilarious when he'd get you and everybody else would just be laughing at you. But nowadays, that guy would lose his fucking job. He'd have to be a registered fucking sex offender. I remember I used to fucking try to make sure I was like, you know, you had to have your head on a swivel when that guy fucking came in. Big fucking doughboy looking dude right so i was at the vending machine and i was uh i was I, i've told this story before i was trying i forget what the fuck i was trying to buy some fucking food or whatever and uh as you do at a vending machine and he came walking in he goes oh hey bill how you doing as he was walking by me from left to right he slapped his hand on my left shoulder and then dragged it across my entire back 
as as he was walking past and then squeezed my right fucking shoulder like it was a perky titty. <laughs> like he was squeezing the Charmin. And I was just like, ah! Uh. I mean, it took like a decade and a half to fucking shake that thing off. Now, should that guy have been doing that? No. Do I think I need to report him and he should fucking then lose his job and then this is on him for the rest of his fucking life? No, he's just weird. He's a weird guy, okay? He didn't fucking diddle me, drug me and throw me in a van. He fucking, he, he fucking, I don't know, he got a little too friendly. He gave me the heebie-jeebies, okay? Now, I don't think giving somebody the heebie-jeebies should fucking end your career. I think you ought to be able to sit down with them and be like, listen, could you do me a favor? Can you just say hello? Like, granted, he was, <clears throat> sorry, granted, he was my boss. And I was younger and I didn't know how to fucking say that. But I mean, you know, what if fucking Jesus Christ, every fucking thing, everything is just the biggest. Oh, you know what I did? I went back into the warehouse and I fucking told everybody and I got such a big laugh telling the story. It was almost worth it that he did it. In fact, it was worth it. I don't get I didn't give a shit. I didn't feel fucking triggered and all of that fucking crap. Every fucking thing, you know. But I got to tell you something right now. Anybody who fought in Korea and drove a fucking Olds Cutlass is all right with me. 